Alrighty, what I want to talk about is how do you manage a server if it's in the middle of a rack someplace. Um, let's say that you've got 30 servers, physical servers that are all just, you know, two unit servers sitting in a rack. Um, a lot of times you can go back to the server room and actually sit in there where it's freezing cold and try to peck on a, a little terminal with a little flip up screen and that's not comfortable for anybody. I've never seen it be comfortable. So there's got to be a better way to do it. Well, the way that's a lot easier to do it, like right here is my, my screen that I've got and I can control anything from it. I can do the IS, whatever. This is what you'd see if you directly connected to the box. Um, one way that you can do this is by turning on a remote desktop. So let's take a look right now. If I say netstat a, what I want to show you is there's an, an absence of 3389. And 3389 is the port um, for terminal services so that you can log into this box remotely. Now by default, um, Windows has it turned off, which makes sense. You wouldn't want people to be able to jump on your box just from anywhere. Um, firewalling it off would be even better, but let's just take a look and see how to do it. Right click on my computer, properties, remote settings. Okay. Um, right now it says don't allow connections to this computer. This is what a hacker would want. A hacker wants to be able to see your desktop and log in as a user, and then they've got all kinds of leeway to do whatever they want. Um, you can allow connections, boop, or allow connections, let me set it back to this, see if it comes back again. I'll just cancel. There we go. Allow connections only from computers running remote desktop with network level authentication. So you want people that are authenticated. You've chosen to enable remote desktop um, exception for all interfaces on this machine. You can selectively enable certain interfaces by using the, the firewall tool. So they're basically telling you, okay, you're turning on something powerful here. You might want to go and take a look at your firewall and see is it actually showing us what we want? The firewall's on. Inbound rules. Anyway, look and see ab about who you're offering this to. You might want to say, okay, I want it to, uh, to be able to, to remote console in from any computer in my building or from my home IP address, and that's it. The, that's the only ones I want. I don't want some hacker out there with some odd IP address. Um, doing a remote console into my my box. Here we go. Um, remote service. I don't even know what they're calling it. Anyway, you can dig around and, and specify whatever you want just for the firewall. I'm not going to slow it down right now. There we go. So now I've turned it on, apply, and OK. And I go back to my netstat command where there now is 3389. So remote console is turned on now. So what that means, I can either be logged in or I can, if I'm logged in currently, it'll kick me off when um, I log in. Let's, let's try it. I'm just clicking the little bubble, CMD. Well, I wonder if it worked that way. MS Microsoft Terminal Services Client. MS, you can't see it because it's in another window. MSTSC, Microsoft Terminal Services Client, is the command that you issue. And of course, it's not going over my desktop. There it is. And I'm actually going to connect to 192.168.254.107. And you can specify lots of different options with this. Options. Um, that's how I'm logging in. I logged in last time as administrator. So you can log in as different users if you want to. You've got your display. Um, what kind of, depending on what kind of connection you have, you may want to back it down a little bit. Right now, my configuration is uh, 1920 by um, 1080. So I've got a pretty good 
um, size on the thing, which makes it really comfortable if you're in a, you know, if you're dead, like we're on a gigabit connection to it, so it can handle that, which makes it more comfortable. And you can forward different stuff. You could turn all this stuff on low speed broadband. Hey, we we're on, we are on the LAN, so we can turn this sucker way up. General, and I'm going to connect. And when it connects, it's got Stephen C A administrator and the password capital P A five five W zero R D, and it's saying um, it doesn't know if it's if certificates right or not. So I'm going to say yes. And notice that it has logged me off. Just boom, there. Now, if I'd been logged on as somebody else, that somebody else would be getting a, a message saying, somebody's wanting to log on to this box. Do you want to allow them to do it? So the person sitting at the box has, has precedence. But right now on the big screen that you can't see up here, I actually have a very pretty um, widescreen shot of my server. There we go. And I can do anything that I could do before. Question. I was already logged in as me. Since I was me in both places, it didn't ask if I wanted to be logged off. So I can do whatever I want to. And then when I'm done, it just I can just disconnect. Now, that may not seem terribly handy to you to begin with, but when, you, uh, when you're at home at 3 o'clock in the morning and the server screams and you've got to do something, instead of driving into work, to deal with it this you can connect from um, from home which is another great place to, to deal with, to do this so anyway that's just doing a remote con console um, another thing that you can do that's kind of fancy you can use putty and one thing that I've set up like I'm on a different network so I set putty up to connect to a Linux box here at work and told it to create an encrypted tunnel so I can hit a local port on my machine, it goes through my tunnel using PuTTY, hops out on a Linux box on the network here, and then jumps to whatever box I want to remote console to, to. So that gives me remote console and an encrypted connection. So that's kind of a spiffy way to do it. But anyway, that's the way that people actually do this. Any questions?